Nigerians. How are you guys all doing this morning? This is NMTV from New York and I am Dr. Nana. How are you guys doing? Indeed, I am so very proud to be part of this dynamic and peace that is reigning in Nigeria. In my view, my analysis of this whole election process and processes is that we as Nigerians, I have seen that we truly want a change nation. And change has come. Change has come. It may not be the way we wanted it, but this is the way it is. And I believe that as nations that believe and trust in God and all of that, we should also believe that this is the will of God. Yes. In my view, Peter Obi took his policy agenda to the pulpits, pulpits, and Bola Ahmed Tinubu took his policy agenda to where? To the public. Why am I saying all of this? Bola Ahmed Tinubu spoke his policy, laid out his policy as much as he could then by speaking in clear language for all Nigerian people, home and abroad. First, at the Chatham House. At the inception of all of this, we, from my channel, NMTV New York, we are the one who started promoting Peter Obi because of his uh, ex-deputy. I promoted him very well in my channel. Then I watched um, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the Chatham House interview. You, you hear it? Is. People of growth promoting employment creation and poverty eradication policies at home as outlined in my renewed hope 23. That is the action plan for a better Nigeria as adopted by my political party. Has invested heavily in agriculture, providing loans, and expanding the country's total area of cultivated land. We will build on this, but our focus will be on using technology and expertise to accelerate growth and development by providing the critical infrastructure necessary to achieve the commodity transformation in the agricultural value chain. Access to forwards. The storage and infrastructure are what we require to radically transform the agricultural sector and increase its value to the nation. Uh, the lady just there, please, yes. Uh, you, yeah, madam, please go ahead. Second question. Right, I... Thank you very much for being very precise. Uh, Mr. Tanumba, we had many questions coming in uh, live stream uh, about... Okay. And the second question assigned to Nasiru Erufai. <laughs> and third question assigned to to Ben Ayade. Security situation of Nigeria. Now the questioner has uh, linked it. In terms of regenerating, revamping, and recalibrating the security um, equipment, technology, in terms of the size of the security too, today we have over 200 million people, and there's no way the current strength of our security agencies can adequately cope with the gargantuan and enormous problems of security, securing lives and property. So the personnel, of all the security or coercive agencies will be increased to cope with the large population of Nigeria. That's another dimension. The third dimension is really employing 
state-of-the-art technology like drones. We know today that there is, in terms of kidnapping, in terms of even identifying the oil theft and the oil pipelines, the illegal pipelines that have been rigged, that have been embedded in the ground, the actual spots where these things are. And this has already started. The, tremendously, the goal is to stop it in its entirety. From the present administration, hmm. the classification a, a, a theft and a receiver assist. Mm. So you have to classify the receiver as taking blood money. Mm. Press these challenges or whatever remains of it after the efforts of this administration in at least three ways. First, policing. Nigeria has about 300,000 policemen for a population of over 200 million. We need at least twice that number. That will be achieved. That will be achieved by amending the constitution so that policing can be at federal, state, and even at community level, less and less of criminal activity. The second step is to look at our armed forces and security architecture. What do you expect your cabinet to look like? He's running his campaign on religion. When after Mr. Bola Ahmed Chinibo's administration, when voted into power, it's really very specific on achieving universal health coverage through certain indices, which we will be working at as a government. His Excellency has clearly stated that first, we need to fix the health system of Nigeria and improve on what is there already, providing the right environment in terms of the pay, in terms of the engagement, in terms of training of health workers, improving of the facilities, that's the infrastructure, that we need to give Nigeria quality health care services. More importantly is the fact that we want to move into a system where we can make our primary health care more functional, as well, Jubala Ahmed Tinibu is also concerned in providing assets for healthcare to everyone. He's going to do this by ensuring that he provides free healthcare for pregnant women and children under five to our health insurance scheme. Beyond this, Nigeria has been more dependent on importing drugs from outside the country, vaccines from outside the country, where we we'll produce the essential medicines that Nigerians can consume. But most important of brain drains, and turn it around to become brain gain for Nigeria. All of us city would attract all of this brain down into specialist hospitals that will be built across the geopolitical zones in Nigeria. That's way we can give quality healthcare to Nigeria. After I watched that interview, I started to have a different thought about the man, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who everybody was saying was sick. But policy, a nation is governed by policies. And I saw all that he said. And I was treated. And I started to follow him, but I started to listen to Peter Obi as well. Now, listen to what Peter Obi said at the Chatham House. Nigeria is 63%. With 133 million people who get here in such an economic decline that we have overtaken India as a home for the biggest pool of absolute poor in the world, when there are seven times our population. While the poverty rate in India is 16%, that of Nigeria is 63%. With 133 million people classified as multidimensionally poor. Now that you have watched that, there is two contrasts between two of them. The contrast is, is vivid. This made a whole lot of difference to me. Then coming to Nigeria, Obi was taking all his campaign to the all the worship houses. And I wasn't like, I was like, what's going on? And I was not really, are moving with that flow. 
I know I discussed with my friends and I was like, why is this man always going to these places? Because in my view, those people are part of the problem of Nigeria. Okay? So if he trusts them that much, then I don't know what kind of nation we will have with Peter Obi as the president. Okay? And I, what is making me very happy today, it's because that the youth have now empowered themselves. Oh yes. They have used this process and processes through this election process to empower themselves they are now forced to be reckoned with there's no there's no doubt about that that the youth of nigeria will never be relegated again and i'm proud of that all right now listen to um to see um if you're elected as president sir the one he the grand running they too continue running. <laughs> they three don't rest and do select the best teams that will help build a better Nigeria. Opportunity to exercise their talents. Are it truly the mindset that or do we continue to make mouse migration who must be eliminated with technology, human beings and attract more people into the army? Given, you know, uh, voluntary, I mean, and the equipment necessary, all the tools to fight insecurity must be employed to have a nation that is confident, bold, and peaceful. Mm. Well, unfortunately, um, a lot of the growth that we have seen has not translated to improved and living conditions for the average citizen would you employ to tackle um, issues related to unemployment in the country right now private sector driven opportunity tackle the power problem and on people can work by themselves a common school driver can create a path to fortune. So and, uh, electricity has been a and other infrastructure in right? again. Mm -hmm. Change of mindset. As given that the electricity has been a problem. The strategic commitment, VT, to a positive drive mm -hmm. has to do with the mindset and partnership with the private sector as a government give you some tax incentive on my strategy <laughs> yeah, today i know that day you can bring me back make farming more attractive the youth that can operate ak-47 eh, can operate better a good tractor mm -hmm. to clear the bush and plant the seeds. Exactly. Teacher, the government budget. And um, that, um, can you identify, Your Excellency, um, what sort of funding models can we expect, you know, from your government if elected? To well, I'm proud in Lagos. 600, 600 million naira a month internally generated revenue today 50 billion mm. naira every month mm -hmm. i'm making your savings from oil subsidy which has been a scam that they've been doing
make your oil competitive, attract foreign investment. If you attract foreign investment with incentives, you have expanded base. All you have is a deferred tax period. That I'm giving you this proposal and expected a return within the next three, four weeks. And I get it. It's candid calendarized i will bring my money of lagos state that my first public life got deloitte and to training and economic development for the whole world mm. we eat the skin of our cows instead of turning them to beautiful bags and shoes. <laughs> Having listened to that, what do you think of a man who everyone presumes that is sick and all of that, but he has ideas. And he promised that this is, these are some of the things that he will do. Even then, he did not reveal all of them. Having watched him in the Chatham house, in Abuja, I mean, in, uh, in uh, the one he did in uh, London, and I watch him here. What do you expect someone like me to be thinking, and many other Nigerians to be thinking about? Now, listen to Obi. And when you assume office, if you're elected on the 29th of May, so what are those key things that you would like to run with in the first 100 to 200 days in office? What should citizens expect to see, given the current situation? in the country as has been presented by a colleague who is the Director of Research of the NSG. Well, I think, thank you. The first thing, without which there's no other thing, the other ones only will follow is the issue of security. We'll aggressively, from day one, start dealing with the issue of insecurity which have said that the enemies are not more formidable. I've been, I've traveled all over Nigeria. I've been to places that people said, you can't go, like I mentioned, I've been to you in Southern Burundi. I went to Kartango in Tati and Ambrarians, who were killed in Mubi. So when I arrived at Damaw, I said, leave you, I want to go to Mubi. Is that not the one? Without which it won't be there. Following that is the issue of right? from the within those first hundred to two hundred days, you expect to see traction in the area of security. I can tell you that from from day one, until it's in Anambra, from day one, because there's no other thing to do because the president is not even secure today. They're telling him places to go, and he said numbers like have been presented here today suggest that there's been economic growth. But well, that growth has not translated to improved socio-economic conditions. It has not even translated to improved li living standards. You know, living standards are at an all-time low in Nigeria. Employment with youth disproportionately bearing the burden of this unemployment crisis. What are your thoughts around improving or scaling employment opportunities when you assume office? Well, for me, when you move like I said, from consumption to production. What I expect that that comes with issue of creating jobs. Today, you have most of them. Um, Economy for it. Now that you have seen both of them, what will you start thinking? I was obese person, but I'm not obedient in foolishness okay so if we want our country to move forward we, we, we have to recognize that there are individual differences and what makes a good nation is, is the policy that that nation is being governed by and Bola Ahmed Tinubu laid few policy that captures my heart and Obi could not all right so I want to thank all Nigerians for all the peace that is raining thus far. Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the Jagaban.
is now our president. And we have to empower him so that he can then empower all of us as Nigerians. And he has promised to bring in new people, new face to the administration. And we have to believe that. So he took his policy agendas to the public. And Peter Obi relied on the fake prophecies of the so-called all those people he was moving with, which in my view, I'm entitled to that. They are the affliction of Nigeria. You know, these are the affliction of Nigeria. So I think the Nigerian people have started getting it. And I'm so proud that we now have a president. We do not have a war. Why Obi was busy taking his uh, um, election campaign to the pulpit, the silent majority, they were all watching, right? On election day, the silent majority came out and voted their candidates. So let us have peace. Let us allow peace to win. No one is talking about rigging now. They all read. Children voted in Labour parties, in PDP and APC. So they all read one way or the other. And I want to thank you all for listening. Let's empower Ahmed Bola Tinubu so that he can then empower all of us. And he promised to bring people all over the world back home who are Nigerians, who are willing and able to serve alongside with him. In Nigeria and outside of Nigeria, all of us were here. We have smart people and a policy person. My husband is a strategist and so many others, Nigeria and abroad. Thank you all for listening. Take care now. So proud to be a Nigerian American. <laughs>